everyone, my name is April Spate and welcome to Made with MRTK, a video series where I make cool stuff with the Mixed Reality Toolkit and show you how I did it. For this project, I'm going to show you how to integrate a bot into a Mixed Reality project using the Q&A Maker. This video is the first of four videos within this series and I suggest you follow them in the order in which they are presented. In this first video, I'm going to show you how to set up and configure your Unity environment. We're going to first take a look at a Microsoft Learn module that I authored that'll walk you through the steps as well. We'll also install a couple other things and we're going to import some Unity packages as well. Ready to get started? Let's go. So here's the Microsoft Learn module that I mentioned that I authored. This module will walk you through the steps for setting up a Mixed Reality project in Unity with the Mixed Reality Toolkit. There are exercises as well as more context included with regards to how the different settings impact your project. Highly suggest trying out this module. One thing that's important here is this link for the correct tools. There are tools that need to be installed before you get started with everything. We list the tools that are needed here within the installation checklist. I'm going to let you know which ones you definitely need. The first being Windows 10. Make sure you have that installed followed by Visual Studio 2019. That's going to be 16.8 or higher. And then the final thing you're going to need is this Windows 10 SDK. Make sure you have that as well. The next thing that you'll need is going to be the Cognitive Services Speech SDK, as this is going to be very important so that way we can create the scripts over in Unity for the bot. So speaking of Unity, let's head over to Unity now and create a new project. Here within the Unity Hub, I'm on the Projects tab, going to select New. I am using Unity 2019.4.12 F1 for those who are curious. My template is going to be 3D. My project name is going to be MR-Bot, and then I'm going to save it in my Unity folder. Click Create. Unity will start to create the project, and once it's been created, the Unity Editor will open. Okay, so here we are in Unity. The first thing we're going to do is switch to Build Platform, selecting File, Build Settings, and we're going to select Universal Windows Platform followed by Switch Platform. Once this is done, we should see a button here that says Build, and there we are. Next, we're going to select Player Settings. In the XR Settings section, we're going to select Virtual Reality Supported. Once this change takes effect, we're going to have some additional options here that we can configure. Down here, I have the virtual reality SDKs and I have the Windows Mixed Reality SDK selected here. In the event in your Unity, this is not pre-populated. You can select this plus icon here, followed by Windows Mixed Reality. Next, you're going to want to change the depth format. That's going to be 16-bit depth. And then you have the enable def buffer sharing. You'll want to make sure that that is checked off. Then for the studio rendering mode, that should be single pass instance. Again, that learn module provides even more information with regards to what all these settings even actually mean. So the next thing we're going to do is head into the publishing settings. I'm going to close up XR settings, open publishing settings, and we have a couple of capabilities that we need to select. The first one's going to be internet client. So for this configuration, uh, this capability, if you will, apps will be able to receive incoming data from the internet. Now the app can't act as a server and there's no local network access. The next one's going to be the internet client server. Now this capability is the same as internet client, but it also enables peer-to-peer -peer scenarios where the app needs to listen for incoming network connections. Just after that, we're going to add the private network client server. This provides inbound and outbound access to home and work networks through the firewall. And then the final one we're going to select is microphone. So the microphone will provide access to the microphone audio feed, and that'll allow the app to record audio from a connected microphone. Once that's been selected, we can click X here. And then we're also going to select X here as well. The next thing that we'll want to do is import the, um, Cognitive Services SDK. Going to Assets, followed by Import Package, Custom Package. You're going to go to wherever you have that SDK saved. I happen to keep mine in the Packages folder. And then within here, select the SDK, which is here for me, selecting Open. That's going to prepare the package, and then you can select everything and Import. 
The next thing we're going to do here is import the Mixed Reality Toolkit. Okay, here's the documentation for the Mixed Reality Toolkit for Unity. There's a great deal of information in here, and this is also where you can find the basic building blocks, which happens to be some documentation that I use often, especially in these videos. The way you wanna get the Mixed Reality Toolkit into your Unity project is by using the Mixed Reality Feature Tool. The Mixed Reality Feature Tool contains the various packages that we at Microsoft provide for your Mixed Reality development. And I am going to show you how you can use that tool to import the Mixed Reality Toolkit. Here's the Mixed Reality Feature Tool for Unity. Before you use this, you need to have the Unity project already created and set up. So in the prior step, we set up Unity and we configured for Windows Mixed Reality Development. And now we open up the Mixed Reality Feature Tool for Unity. When this is open, you'll select Start, and then the packages are going to refresh. Once the packages are loaded, we will have a couple different sections to choose packages from. We're going to be looking for the Mixed Reality Toolkit section. Okay, so within the Mixed Reality Toolkit, there are eight different packages here available. All we're going to need is a foundation package, given that that's the only required one to use the toolkit. We also have some different versions available as well. I am going to stick with 2.5.4 and I'm going to check that one off and then select Get Features. Within the Import Features tab, what we need to do next is select the project path. So that's going to be wherever you have the project stored on your computer. Once you've selected that, you can select Import. You'll review and approve and then select Approve. From there, you'll have the prompt that shows that it, the project has been updated and you can return to Unity. From here, you'll select Exit. Now that the Unity project has been configured, we need to actually add the toolkit to our scene. So selecting the Mixed Rally Toolkit menu item and then Add to Scene and Configure, that adds the toolkit itself as well as this Mixed Reality Play Space object. The Mixed Reality Play Space object is where the main camera has gone off and ran to, so it's going to be stored in there. Here within the Mixed Reality Toolkit, however, what needs to happen is that we need to select the configuration profile. The configuration profile that I'm going to use is the default HoloLens 2 since I'm using a HoloLens. However, I highly suggest taking a look at the MRTK documentation as always for more information regarding the other configuration profiles if you're not using a HoloLens 2. The default profiles cannot be modified, so what you can do instead is select clone followed by um, cloning it and then you can adjust the different settings that are down here just as a heads up. The final and last thing we want to do here is just import TMP Essential Resources, and that's going to be the Text Mesh Pro Essential Resources. The reason that we're going to import this is because when we later create some UI, we're going to use TMP um, Text Mesh uh, for a text object, and therefore we'll need to import this. If you don't do this step, Unity will provide a pop-up for you to do so when you try to add a text object. So making sure everything's selected, click import. It's a relatively quicker import compared to everything else. And now it's been imported and we are all set and ready to start creating our Unity project. In this video, we're going to head over into Azure and we're going to create a couple of Azure resources. There are a lot of resources that we need to create, including our bot. So I would suggest you follow the instructions as they are presented. If you don't have an Azure account, you can create a new one and make sure you have that account created before we head over into the Azure portal. Ready to get started? Let's go. Here in Azure, we have quite a few resources that need to be created. So make sure you're doing this in the order that I show you. Here within the Azure Marketplace, we're going to search for the first resource, which is going to be speech. Should be the first result. Select speech here, and then followed by create. And you're going to give it a globally unique name. I'm going to keep mine as consistent as possible. So I'll name it demo spate bot. Select your subscription and then your location. Your location is going to be essentially where your users will be, um, the ones that are using the app. 
And then the price and tier for me, I'm gonna select that as standard. And my resource group, I have an existing one called Mixed Reality, so I'm gonna select that. If you don't have an existing one, you can select Create New. Speaking of Create, I'm gonna create that. And then the deployment will go ahead and start. You can follow along progress on this overview screen. And once it's done, here we are, it's complete. So the next thing we're going to do is head over to the Q&A Maker. Here within the Q&A Maker is where we're going to create the knowledge base for our bot. So the bot derives its answers from the information that you give it. In our case, it's going to be a knowledge base. I like to make my knowledge base from an Excel spreadsheet and then upload it into here. And I'll show you in a bit where that goes, but let's take a look at that Excel first. So the Excel spreadsheet is relatively minimal. There's just two columns. The first one has a header of question, and then the column B has a header of answer. Questions will be listed in A, answers in B, and you're gonna place a corresponding answer to the questions in the column next to it. Now, I created a project in the past that explores monuments, and you can chat to the bot to learn more uh, facts about the monuments. So that's what these questions are. I am going to now make sure this is saved and I'm going to head back to the Q&A maker to create that knowledge base. So here within the Q&A maker, we want to create a knowledge base. And then the first thing we'll do is create a Q&A service. So this is going to take us back over into Azure. In here, we need to give our project details. I'm going to select the resource group again, same as before. It's going to be mixed reality. This one also needs to be a nice, uh, unique name. So I'm going to go with what I used before, which is demo spate bot. And this one I'm going to append Q&A to the end. Price and tier is going to be standard. And then my location is going to be West US 2 as before. Pricing will make it basic. The application name is going to be the same. Website location will be West US 2. And then down here in the app insights, we'll also use West US 2. Select review and create, review and then create. Now this deployment might take just a tad bit longer. So once it's done, you'll reflect that here in the overview page. All right, so now the deployment is complete. We're gonna head back over to the Q&A maker now. And so step one is done. Step two asks us to refresh so that way we can connect the Q&A service to our knowledge base. So selecting refresh. It's going to load our Q&A services. And so the ID should reflect whatever your tenant is. Then the address description name, I'm going to select Visual Studio Enterprise because that's the one I have. Now the next step is going to depend on how much time has passed. So if you get a little prompt telling you that it's uh, not available yet, just give it a few moments. So for Azure Q&A service, I'm going to select Demo Spate Bot Q&A. Now this, as I mentioned, will pop up in the event that um, the runtime isn't ready. So you can select OK. It says try selecting in about 10 minutes. So we'll give it a moment. OK, so let's try that again. You're going to click Refresh and then followed by Azure Q&A service. You're going to select that resource you just created. And then for language, it's going to be Chit Chat and Extraction available. For me, that's going to be English. Now, Chit Chat's going to provide some personality to your bot, whereas Extraction provides a response based on whatever answers you provide it. So I like to uh, set it up with English here and Chit Chat and Extraction available. However, if your language does not fall within this list, then you only have Extraction available. So selecting English here. So next, I'm going to give my knowledge base a name. I'm going to name mine Monument Facts because these are Monument Facts. And then here in step four, we need to populate it. So we have some supported formats listed. I'm going to use a file, which is going to be my Excel spreadsheet. So selecting Add File and then navigate to wherever that's saved. For me, that's going to be in my Unity folder, followed by KB Facts, click open. And then for chit chat, I'm going to keep it at none, but you can change it to professional, friendly, witty, caring, or enthusiastic. Last step number five is create the knowledge base. Now that the knowledge base has been created, 
On the left, we have a column for the question, and on the right, we have answers. We can also add alternative phrasing here as well for the questions. However, our bot's going to be smart enough to pick up what exactly you're asking for um, as you continue to test it and train it. So we're going to test this first. Uh, before I do that, as a heads up, you can add more Q&A pairs by selecting this so you don't have to go back through the process of re-uploading the Excel. So to test it, we're going to select test. Down here in the below where it says type your message, I'm going to just type in where are the great pyramids, leaving out the Giza part because I want you to see that the bot still understands what you're asking. The bot's going to respond with the response here the, of the location. One thing I want to point out is that you can inspect and do some additional configuration here. So if I click inspect, I'm going to get the ability to add alternative phrasing as I mentioned. And then also we're going to get a confidence score from the bot. That confidence score tells us how confident the bot is that this is the answer. I think I have some sirens in the background. We'll just ignore that. So it essentially guessed the correct one, which is uh, the answer that it provided for answer. But in the event that was not the answer, I can select one of the other responses here or I can enter a new answer. So I'm going to close this all together because I'm done testing. And then from there, you're going to select save and train. After you save and train, the next thing you're going to do is go to publish. When you get to this page, which is almost done, the service needs to be deployed. So select publish. So from here, we're going to create a web app bot service in Azure by clicking on create bot. Once we're back in Azure, the next thing we need to do is fill in whatever needs to be added here. So we have the bot handle it needs to be globally unique and it actually appends bot to the end. You can change this if you want. Then we have our resource group for me. That's still mixed reality. Location is West US 2. And then as we continue to scroll down here, we have the application insights, which needs to be changed for me to West US 2. And then I have this configure require settings for the app service plan and location. I'm going to create a new plan. Make sure my location is going to be West US 2. Here we are. Click OK. And then we're going to select create. All right, so now the resource has been created. We can click go to resource in that notification that just left us. And then in here, what we now need to do is add a direct line of speech channel. This is going to enable us to communicate with our bot using voice. So the documentation here for connect the bot to direct line speech provides step-by-step -step instruction for how you can go about doing that. Definitely take a look at this. However, I'm going to walk you through the steps back over in Azure. So the first thing you're going to want to do is come to channels. And then once you're in channels, the next thing that you're going to want to do is add a direct line speech within the more channels section. In the cognitive service account drop down, you're going to select your bot. And then that's all you need to do here. Click save. So now that that's been done, we're going to head into the settings. And then within settings, we want to check for enable streaming endpoint. Select save here at the top. And then from there, we're going to head into configuration for just one more setting. Within configuration, we want to make sure that WebSockets is selected. So heading into general settings, WebSockets is selected for me. If not for you, make sure you check that off. Save if necessary. And then from there, that is going to be all the steps to create the bot. Make sure you follow these instructions in order. It is very easy to forget something. In this video, we're going to head into Unity and we're going to create some UI as well as add the bot and some scripts so that way we can get the bot working in our project. Again, as in the last video, be sure to follow these steps as they are presented as we want to avoid having any errors in Unity. Ready to get started? Let's go.
I'm gonna to start to add some UI that'll help with any potential debugging needs that we have. I'm gonna create this project whereas it'll produce no errors, but I personally think that adding this UI will definitely help if you're trying to make sure that you're connected to Azure. I'm also gonna include in there what Azure recognizes as well, and it'll also include if any errors are thrown. Again, completely optional, but I will walk you through this process now. So we're going to add two different types of objects, one being a quad, which is going to be a flat surface, and the other being text. So here in a hierarchy panel, right click, select 3D object and quad. So we're going to zoom in on that quad object. So it's here right now. Make sure it's highlighted in the hierarchy. Hover your mouse over scene and then click F. So right now we don't see much. If I turn it around, there it is. That was the wrong direction. And then the first thing I like to do is add some color to it because right now it's the default material. Within Unity, there are some, or within the Mixed Reality Toolkit, if you will, there are some colors available. So you can search for them in the project panel by going to MRTK Standard. That's going to list all the colors available. If I slide this over to the right, I'll see more colors or more so I can actually see the colors rather than it's a corresponding file name. I'm gonna slide that back down because I know I want white and it's at the bottom. Selecting white, I am going to drag that on top of the object. There we go, and now it's white. The next thing we wanna do is place this in a position that way we can see it. Right now it's position is 000, which is origin. So we wanna push that back on the Z axis. 000 is going to be essentially in the middle of your headset. So pushing it back by two, we can now see it in the game view. The other thing I'm going to do is just extend it on the Y axis so that way it's a little bit longer horizontally. I chose a 0.3 for that. Now that the quad's been created, I'm gonna do that trick again to highlight it, come to the scene and then click F so that way I can zoom in more on it. So the quad's good and ready. The next thing we need to do is add some text. So I'm using a method, whereas it'll definitely save some time since we need to add three different text objects. What I'm going to do is create one, configure it, and then duplicate it. So right-clicking in the hierarchy panel, selecting 3D object, text, touch mess pro. And here's the first one. We're gonna name this one connection status. This text is going to provide us with whether we are connected to the service or Azure, if you will. And at the moment, we don't see it because it's A, not in front of us, and B, it's relatively large, and it's also white, which it's a color of our quad. So starting with the position of the Z axis, we're gonna change that to a two. And then again, like I said, it's gonna be relatively large. Let's collapse this, close this up, and then open back up text mesh pro text, change this to say connection status. That'll change what the text actually says. We're gonna make the font a 0.4 so that way it's a little smaller. And then for alignment, we're gonna center it and then place it in the middle. You can't quite see it in the game view because it's a white on white, <laughs> but if you look here in the scene view, you can see the outline for it. Now to change the color of it, we're going to collapse everything once more Head into the Liberation Sans SDF material. For face, select that, and then we're gonna change all these, except for the A, to a zero. That's gonna give us the color black. Make sure A stays at 255, otherwise the color will definitely fade into that white, and then you can't see anything. So exit this, and now we have black text. The last thing we wanna do from here is just move it up on the Y axis, and there we go. So for the next two text objects, I'm gonna select connection status and then do control D followed by another control D that duplicates it. Right now they're all sitting on top of each other. So we'll move them in a bit, but for now, let's just rename each item. The first one's going to be recognize text. And then the second one's going to be error. So for recognized text, I am going to come down like before in the text input, change that to recognize text. And then for error, likewise, I'm gonna come in here and name this one error. 
And then I'm going to actually move recognize text and error to be together. So selecting both of them and then moving it down on the Y axis. Notice I'm keeping them on top of each other. The reason being is that it's almost kind of sort of set up like a conditional statement. If Azure actually recognizes text, then it's going to give us back what's recognized and that error will never appear. Likewise, if an error occurs, recognized text will not appear and we'll only see the error. Because I want them to both display in that same location, that's why I'm placing them on top of each other. So now that the text has been created, the next thing that I wanna do is add in a button to activate the microphone. So when you press this microphone button, what it's going to do is activate the microphone. Azure will be listening for an utterance, and then that'll kick off the whole process of sending the recognized uh, text, if you will, to Azure, and then the bot spitting back out at us some answer. So we're going to add that button using a button prefab. What's great about Mixed Reality Toolkit is that there are button prefabs available and there's a variety of options. You can also create your own custom one. I'm going to head to documentation now just to show you. Here within the MRTK documentation, I'm on the buttons page. And then within here, there's just some more information about it. Most important, the location of them within the MRTK um, Foundations package. There are examples of buttons available, and if you scroll over to the right, you can see more, depending on, of course, how large your monitor is. And as you scroll down, there's instructions on how to go about adding them to your project. One thing I do wanna point out is that you can make buttons from scratch, and we provide instructions for how to do that. And then there's also some custom button examples. My favorite, which is the one here, is actually gonna be the keyboard. It's really cool because they added audio clips for each of the different keys. So as you press one, you're gonna get the corresponding key for that. All right, so I'm gonna head back up so I can grab that location of the buttons within the uh, package. And it's gonna be MRTK SDK Features UX Interactable Prefabs. Let's see if I can remember that. I'm gonna head back over into Unity now. All right, so starting off, we are in MRTK, followed by SDK, heading into Features. Then we need to go to UX, followed by Interactable, and then finally Prefabs. So here are all those buttons. If you scroll this to the right, you can actually see them. And if I scroll this back down, I get the file names. I just want the file names because it's easier for me to find the button that I need. If I select pressable button HoloLens 2, there's the button. If I slide this up, I can turn it around and actually see the button. I'm gonna drag this button to the hierarchy. So now it's added to my scene. Like everything we've been added so far, it's going to be at origin. So let's move it on the Z axis by a two. And it's there, it's just super teeny tiny, moving it on the Y axis. I'm gonna scale that up to a five. So now it's gonna be significantly larger. I'm gonna rename this microphone. And then I'm going to do that trick I did where I highlight and then select F and now I'm zoomed in on it. So our button prefabs have um, a lot of configuration already in place, which is great. So that way when you need to edit them, there's not that much more you need to do with regards to setup. So here within this button, make sure I added the correct one. Yes, I did. Okay, so let me slide this back down. I was hiding everything. I'm gonna collapse everything and then I'll walk you through what can be configured. So here within the button config helper script, this was really important because this is where you can change um, almost everything for the button. Starting off with the main label text, that's what's gonna change that says button. So we're gonna change that to microphone. Now the see it, say, say it label is going to enable your users to interact with the buttons using speech. I'm not setting it up for this project, but if you do decide to do so, you need to go to the uh, configuration profile and you need to add some speech commands. So it's a bit more configuration to set up if you're doing that. The next thing I'm going to do is change the icon so that way it makes sense for our users to know that this is a microphone. We have some icons available and because we have a microphone one that makes life easier, I'm gonna select that there and now I have microphone. So now the button's set up and ready to go. The next thing we need to do is create the actual scripts. I like to keep my scripts in a scripts folder. So here in assets, I'm gonna right click and select create, 
followed by folder. I'm going to call this scripts and then I'm going to navigate inside of it. The first script that I'm going to create is going to be a wave audio data script. We're going to need this as the bot script is going to interact with it, but it's going to provide us the wave audio data as it's called. So right clicking in project and then selecting create followed by C sharp script. I'm going to call it, as I said, wave audio data. If you are copying the scripts as they are within the GitHub repo, make sure you follow this camel case naming convention. If not, you'll need to modify your class based on what you're naming the script. After this compiles, we're going to open this up in Visual Studio, which it's complete now. So let's open up Visual Studio. And then in here, I'm going to select everything, get rid of it, and then paste that script in. So if you have any errors, that means something somewhere is incorrect, but I have no errors, so I'm going to press save. Back here in Unity, it's compiling. And then once that's done, I'm going to add my bot script. So right clicking, selecting create, C sharp script, name this bot. Again, follow my naming convention of a lowercase bot. Once that's done compiling, double clicking, opening up Visual Studio. So from here, you can click reload. This should be as is for bot. We're going to grab everything from the script in the GitHub repo, get rid of this, paste this in. And as I said, if everything was done correctly, um, you'll have no issues. So I'm going to walk you through this just a little bit. Keep in mind that you'll want to become more acclimated with what's happening in this script in the event that you decide to modify anything. So starting out with the public string variables that I have here, subscription key, region, and bot ID. These are created as public string variables because it'll enable us to modify these within the Unity editor. Do not suggest doing that when you're in production, but as you're demoing and testing things out, feel free to place it in the Unity editor. And I'll show you in a bit how you can modify the values. We also have four more public variables. Pressable button is going to be the microphone. And then the last three are the text objects that we created. Heading on down, let's start with um, these logs. So some logs have been added to the script. So you can check that out within the console, within the Unity editor. As we continue on down, we have this listen once button. We have a conditional statement here. We're going to check whether a UI button has actually been assigned to that. And if not, we will get an, uh, a nice little message to let us know that we need to add one. Heading on down to update, down in here, we have an audio clip that's being created. And then the button click, it's going to call start listening. And that's going to be the function that's used to start listening after you press that microphone button. Just below it, we have the create dialogue service connector. This is going to reflect the connection status. So once we have connected to Azure, this will reflect that it has in fact connected. Scrolling on down, we have start listening. I mentioned that earlier. So it's going to look for that button press and also ensure that you are in fact connected. And then if something is recognized, we'll get that final recognition in the recognition in the recognized uh, speech field that we created. And if there is an error instead, um, we're not going to get anything back with regards to a recognition. And I believe um, oh, once we get something back, we will get the audio received. That's going to come back to us um, as audio. It'll be essentially what the bot says back to us. And that's it for that script. So everything's good here. I'm going to close this up. Let that compile. I think it already did. So we're going to open that microphone object or select the microphone object because that's going to be the object that actually gets the script. So selecting microphone, I'm going to collapse this, click on add component followed by bot. And then down in here, what we need to do, let me close this again because it's kind of hard to see it opening up the bot script. Here are those public variables that I mentioned, and we can modify them directly here in the Unity editor. Start with the more uh, simpler ones. So the state indicator is going to be the connection status. So we're going to drag that there. Error text is going to be error. And then the recognized text is going to be recognized text. 
The listen once button will be the microphone itself. And then the last thing we're going to do is add in the region, which is West US 2 for me. The next thing we'll do from here is head back over into Azure to grab the subscription key as well as the bot ID. Definitely, definitely suggest following these instructions as is. Otherwise, you might end up with the wrong key here, especially for the subscription and the bot because we've created a very good amount of Azure resources. So let's head over to Azure to retrieve the subscription key as well as the bot ID. Okay, so here in Azure, we wanna be within that speech resource, the very first one that we created. Within here, there's gonna be a keys and endpoints section. Copy that key, and then we're gonna take that back over into Unity. In the subscription key field, you're gonna paste that, paste that in there. And then the next thing we're gonna do is head back into Azure, and we're gonna grab the bot ID. So within the web app bot resource, on the overview page is where we can find a subscription ID or the bot ID, if you will. Copy that and then head back over to Unity. And we're gonna paste that into the bot ID field. One thing that can help you make sure you're potentially using the right keys is that the bot ID should be longer than a subscription key. Do keep in mind that the way that I instructed you to gather these is very important because it is very easy to put the wrong keys in here. And if that happens, Unity is going to throw a nice error and completely shut down on you. Trust me, I know from experience. So now that that's in there, I'm going to save everything. I did create a scene for this, which is bot. I'm gonna also add it to my scenes by going to file, build settings, and then add open scenes. So now that that's added, we're gonna test this out here in a Unity editor, and then later we'll deploy to the HoloLens. I am gonna back up a bit here so we can see, there we go. I'm gonna expand this game view so we have a little bit more real estate to work with. So what's gonna happen is that I'm going to use our simulated uh, hand input that'll bring me up a nice articulated hand. And then I am going to first hear the bot once this starts, the bot will greet us. And then I'm gonna bring up my hand using the space bar. I'm gonna scroll in with my mouse scroll wheel to press the actual microphone button, which at that point I can say something the bot will then listen for an utterance, and then from there, Azure will do its magic to let us know what's been recognized, and then the bot's gonna give us an answer to our question. So I'm gonna stick with that Great Pyramids question from earlier. I'm gonna head into play mode now. Hello and welcome. So there's the bot greeting us. We have dialogue service connected created. That means we are connected. I'm gonna use W on my keyboard to just zoom in a bit. And then I'm gonna use the space bar to bring up my hand as I mentioned. I'm gonna use a scroll wheel to press it and ask my question. Where are the Great Pyramids located? The Great Pyramids of Giza were located on a plateau on the west bank of the Nile River on the outskirts of modern day Cairo. So that's great, it's the correct answer. Now let's see what happens when I ask it in a different way. Where are the Great Pyramids created? The Great Pyramids of Giza were located on a plateau on the west bank of the Nile River on the outskirts of modern day Cairo. So notice this time with the final recognition, it heard me say, where are the Great Pyramids created? That's why I love this feature because it really helps with your articulation and it gives you an idea of what it is that Azure heard you say. So using this UI is really great for debugging. Let's see if we can ask one more question. I'm gonna ask, how big is the Great Pyramid? How big is the Great Pyramid? The sides of the pyramid's base average 755 feet. The original height of the pyramid was 481 feet. So you may have noticed she called a pyramid a py pyramid. <laughs> Couldn't even pronounce it myself. But that more likely came from the fact that I had a typo. So let's go back and look at the knowledge base or the Excel. So yes, I had a typo that says pyramid. So this is why it's very important to, to make sure that whatever you feed the bot is correct because 
the Bible read things as they are. Okay, it looks like from here, I just need to make an update to the knowledge base for the question. And I'm gonna show you how you can tell that you've made that update. Let's head back to the knowledge base. So back here in the knowledge base, I'm gonna come to this answer that's right here. I'm gonna double click it, update for Pyramid. And then from there, we can save and train. Once that's done, we're going to publish it once more, and then we can head right on back over to Unity. This happens very quickly. So going to publish, I'm going to publish this here. All right, so I'm going to head back into Unity now and try it again. Entering play mode. Hello and welcome. Ask a question. How big are the Great Pyramids? The sides of the pyramid's base average 755 feet. The original height of the pyramid was 481 feet. Isn't that wonderful? That quick, we have an update. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is just build this app, deploy it to my HoloLens, and provide a in real life demo for you in the next video. In this video, I will be demoing the app that we created within my HoloLens 2. Ready to get started? Let's go. Okay, so here's the app. Once I start it, it's going to connect to Azure and then the bot's going to greet me. Hello and welcome. All right, so in front of me, I see here that the dialogue service connector has been created. I'm gonna press the microphone button and ask a question. Where are the Great Pyramids? The Great Pyramids of Giza were located on a plateau on the west bank of the Nile River, on the outskirts of modern day Cairo. All right, cool, I'm gonna ask another question. How big is the Great Pyramid? The sides of the pyramid's base average 755 feet. The original height of the pyramid was 481 feet. All right, cool. So that works. And that's it for this project. If you'd like to get started creating your own experiences, check out the links below in the description. And if you have any questions or comments, either leave them below or come find me on Twitter at Vogue and Code. Be sure to subscribe so that way you're notified for the next project within this video series. And until next time, see you later.